I've uh, never recorded a gameplay video before, but I thought that since I've been playing the Artifact 2.0 beta and having a good time that I'll just record a game or two and see if people find it valuable. Um, I'm playing the mode that most people play at the moment right now, which is Hero Draft. And before the game starts, there's the draft stage and it's my turn to pick first. You can see my time ticking down. Um, in this mode, I, my experience so far has been that the red uh, heroes are the strongest. The red is generally the most powerful color. Blue is probably the weakest, but everything is more or less playable. Um, Sansil is actually one of my least favorite red heroes because um, I think that both his ability and his spell are very circumstantial. So I'm going to actually start with the Dragon Knight here and see what my opponent does. Um, I think Dragon Knight is, is quite a good green hero. He's got sustain with the Dragon Blood, which lets him stay alive and hold a lane. And he can also push down towers, sort of like the Dota 2 Dragon Knights, uh, by poisoning them, essentially. So my opponent's picked Draw, which is also really strong. And Axe, also quite a strong hero, fairly predictable green-red. Uh, my preferred hero here is probably Legion Commander. I'm quite a fan. Um, we might end up being in a green-red mirror match. I think that Anti-Mage is okay. Prelex is quite good if you're going to be blue, but I'd prefer not to be. Lady Anshu is very good, but you kind of have to like make things work. And um, sort of partially because I'm recording this video, I'm just going to take the LC, which is a bit more straightforward. Um... Sven, I think, is very straightforward here because Sven is pretty much just the best hero in, in the game, at least in this mode. I haven't played any Constructed. I don't think a lot of Constructed is being played yet. But basically, the way Sven's cleave works in this version of Artifact is he's got 100% cleave damage and he doesn't need to cleave off a target. So um, in the deployment phase, you can try and put him at an angle so that he doesn't take damage, but he deals damage which is a really powerful effect. Um, so yeah, fully looking red-green. My opponent doesn't have anything that's dishing out a huge amount of damage yet, although I guess they've got the draw, which is going to give everyone else damage. Um, also gives me a hint of how I'm going to want to play. I definitely want to kill her as much as possible, which is usually what you want to do against the draw, because she passively gives a huge boost to her team. But this is a pretty straightforward pick for me. I think Keef is actually very good. Um, I think it's a lot better when there's heroes that have high attack because Keef's ability, stop hitting yourself, uh, makes an enemy attack themselves. So, But I think he's just generally good as well. Um, reasonable stats, useful spell to have to move things around. Uh, taunt, give you a quick cast that you can duel or anything like that. Um, I'm, I think Bristleback is only good when you're expecting a lot of uh, spell damage, so that his passive Bristleback can trigger. I'm not expecting any spell damage here, so I can take Treant, which is straightforward with what I have, red, green. The other choice is to go for Shadow Fiend. I actually think Shadow Fiend is like a super strong hero. But then I'm going three colors, which is sort of a risky thing to do in, in draft. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, I really like Shadow Fiend. I'm going to try and make Shadow Fiend work if I can. It's one of my favorite heroes in this game. Shadow Fiend basically, he's got a very short cooldown, potentially high damage spell. Um, it gets powered up by, uh, if he's standing next to enemies that die, then he gets extra charges of ne Necromastery, it gives him damage, and it buffs up his spell as well. So what's interesting here is I could actually just take Sniper and cut the Dragon Knight and end up in red-black, uh, which maybe makes a bit more sense. Also, Sniper's active ability deals 4 damage, and you can see there's heroes here which would die to that from full HP, the Enchantress and the Phantom Lancer, and other heroes that 
don't need to have taken that much for it to happen either. Um, so I think I take Sniper and cut out my first pick of the draft, funnily enough, which is something that you can always do. Like in these drafts, you always cut one hero out. Um, and it doesn't really matter which stage you picked it at in order to do that. So Sniper and Keith both have uh, three round cooldown abilities. So both of them kind of want to be in the fifth spot, but I'd rather protect the Sniper than the Keith. Although, hmm, actually no, I'd rather protect the Keith than a Sniper. It's tough. It depends on basically which one I think is going to kill someone as they come in. But Sniper doesn't, doesn't, Sniper can kill someone without being in front of them, whereas Keith has to be. So, I think I'll do it like this. And then the question, there's going to be questions about how I order putting these first three in. Um, but I can get a bit more information about my opponent first before deciding. So, usually people just put Sven in last because then you guarantee that Sven gets that good matchup um, where he doesn't get attacked but he does attack them. Uh, my most natural offlaner here, which is sort of the hero you put in that they're going to get to react to, is probably Legion Commander. So the question becomes, can I put Shadowfiend first? Shadowfiend really wants to stand next to the creep, so it would have to be here. Um, what's the worst case scenario with this? The worst case scenario is... I mean, if they put Enchantress exactly in front of Shadowfiend, it means he doesn't attack on his first round, and he'll die to her in two hits. If they put Bristleback exactly here, it's a little bit annoying, because Shadowfiend does a lot of spell damage, and Bristleback likes... Although, at the same time, Shad I mean, Shadowfiend does increments of one damage, and Bristleback reduces them to one. The big problem is that the Cool Spray gets activated then. So I kind of want my SF to avoid the Bristleback. Um... But I, I also kind of think the advantage of putting Sven in third is too big not to use it. So I'm just I'm gonna sort of take a small risk yet. My opponent's done the same thing actually. We've both put the relatively weak hero in first, just sort of hoping that it doesn't match up badly, and we've both been paid off. Um, so the draw's gonna survive well, the SF's gonna survive well, and they're both a little bit snowboily. Where I put my Legion Commander doesn't really matter so much. Um, there are some heroes where it matters, but mostly it's going to depend on how the game builds up. Uh, and I think at a higher level of strategy, there are things to consider. Like you look at, um, you think about what kind of card, I can't show the deck tracker until we've deployed, but you think about what kind of cards based on the colors you have. Oh, I can show it. I thought I couldn't. Anyway. Um, I don't like wasting too much time looking at those. I think it's better to actually be hero driven anyway. So I'm just going to do that. And they've put in the Bristleback, makes sense, because they can put their Enchantress first, which is going to disarm my Legion Commander and threaten to kill it in two attacks. And then Sven will either be to the left or to the right of Bristleback, because the whole idea is Sven then damages Bristleback without Bristleback damaging Sven. Uh, I think... Again, it doesn't really matter. I would want Sven here if I think my opponent's likely to replace this creep with something stronger. So maybe that's a reason enough to just put it there because sometimes people put a replace their basic creep with like a stronger creep that stands and holds this lane all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. So for my first turn, I have a few plays that I can make. Um... None of them are really particularly powerful. Presence of the Dark Lord is something I will eventually put on my Shadow Fiend, and it's going to synergize quite nicely with his Requiem, because then like his dots of one damage will deal three on the first hit to anything close to him. Um, there's not really... I can play clear the deck in my Sven lane, and then Bristleback dies right away. Maybe that's worth it. I mean, he's going to die in two hits anyway, though. So I'm going to do what people often end up doing. I'm just going to play my career and see if my opponent gives me some information. 
it's very possible they just play their own courier, but maybe they give me information about their plan for the turn and then I can react to it. No, so they've just played their courier as well. Um, the thing about clear the deck is that I think it's a better combo with Sven later on in the game. Because he can cleave, so he hits three things. And if I use this when he's facing a bunch of heroes, I can kill them all, regardless of his damage. And I do think Bristleback's going to die in two hits anyway, because they're not getting gold to protect it. So it, it mostly becomes a question of if I play this creep or this presence of the Dark Lord. Um, the presence is more mana efficient, but the creep is more damage efficient to get the damage out now. I think it's a reasonable call that I might duel next round. So you know what, I'm going to put the... Presence now, because if I end up using a duel, I'll have two mana, I'll have four mana next turn, so I can play Committed Rebel and duel. So I'm just trying to maximize the usage of my mana. Um, I might be wrong about the duel, but it kind of depends on where they put their Phantom Lancer, if it's in one of the red hero's lanes, and if I think it's a good idea. Cool, so look what I did here. I put this fan here, because if they had replaced their creep with this, it would have died. Um, so I think I kind of got paid off there because this creature with armor could just stand here and kill my creeps infinitely kind of thing. I do take more damage this way, but... So I can't afford any items, there's no reason to upgrade the shop this early, so I'm just going to get gold. And now I have to decide where to put my sniper. Um... Mostly I'm going to be thinking about where can it shoot something next round. I'm expecting Bristleback to die on his own. I'm expecting Enchantress to die on her own. I could put it mid, but then both my black heroes are in the same lane, which is like slightly awkward. Um, I could put it over here just to kill this creep. Although it takes quite a lot of damage in the process. There's also a question about where I think my opponent's going to put their Phantom Lancer. Because I don't want it to be standing facing the Phantom Lancer. But it would be nice if it was in the same lane as the Phantom Lancer. Um, I think it's actually pretty likely they put the PL in front of the SF. Although they will just trade with each other if that's the case. I'm going to go for this way. Yeah, okay. So, this might lead to me ending up abandoning this mid lane quite early on. Um, which is the lane I prefer to abandon the most, because the left and right lanes play first, uh, alternately on turns, the, the middle lane never plays first, and so I generally find that winning lane 1 and 3 is, is a strategy I prefer. But I don't like leaving this draw alive, and so... That's the one thing that's a little bit awkward for me here. Um, I don't think that I have an important play to make. I'm not going to duel. I'm not going to clear the deck. I'm just going to use Shadow Fiend's ability. And... Because Shadow Fiend's going to die anyway. And then lose souls. Oh. A little bit unfortunate. I would have much rather hit everything else. I hit PL twice. I would have rather hit like the creep and the draw ranger. Because the PL is going to die anyway. But my next play for the turn is definitely just going to be one of these. Okay. Legion Command has been stunned. I Means she's going to die without making a kill. Again, slightly disappointing. I think if I put Committed Rebel in front of draw. Next turn when Keef comes in, he can kill Dra. Or I could put him in front of Enchantress and kill Enchantress. It's sort of... I'll have either choice. Ideally with initiative. No, I'm not going to have initiative. So that means that my opponent will have a chance to protect um, whoever I'm trying to kill with Keef. So I always buy Midas Greaves, which gives you more money early on in the game if I can. Um, 
and none of these items are very important to me right now. I'd rather just build up more money and upgrade my shop and invest in bigger items. It's not that I wouldn't spend money right now. It's just that these items are sort of circ circumstantial and I don't see that I need the um, them particularly right now. So there's a question about which one of these is higher priority targets. Uh, it's kind of like what I said before. I think that mid lane is better to abandon usually for me, but I don't really want to leave a draw ranger lag because the damage is going to start mattering. So I think I'll just do it like this. Axe is going to kill my sniper. There's nothing at all I can do about that. But if my opponent immediately kills Snipe with Axe, then Drow dies too. If they wanted to protect their Drow with an item, they have to take the risk that I can protect my Sniper too. I, th I imagine that's probably what they're busy thinking about. Um, because if they... Oh, okay. In fact, they've lost connection to the game. So... Hopefully they're going to reconnect or this is going to be a sort of awkward video that I could talk through some other things while they're gone. Um, so I can just show you the ability. My, my plan is to use this ability of Keefs, which everyone pointing at Keef battles themselves. Obviously it draws at 3-3, draw will die. Um, their plan is to use Axe, which battles everything adjacent, which is these three in front of it. it means it would kill Sniper and the axe wouldn't die. But yeah, it looks like my opponent has disconnected and has yet to reconnect. It's going to automatically pass for them. Unfortunately, that's just how the game goes. If you don't, um, there's nothing re I can really do here to be like a good sport about it. Um, I kind of just have to play the game and um, so I just checked there that lethal means uh, battle damage kills them so I couldn't like put this in the right lane and then sniper kills that with a shot so I'm just gonna do what I was planning to do kill draw right away hopefully my opponent will reconnect um, if they don't reconnect soon I'll probably just cut the video and uh, start a new one when I start a different game. Um, it takes quite a while for them to rope. One of the things that players have complained about is especially in the deployment phase, it takes very long if a player is disconnected. Okay, they've, they've reconnected. And they've killed my units and I killed their unit, which is, I think, in high likelihood what would have happened regardless. So I don't feel that bad, bad about them disconnecting. Um, and now it's just a question of where I put these greaves. This is sort of a weird item because you want to put it on a hero that's going to live so that you get the, the income. But it also gives a little bit of armor, um, which means you want to put it on a hero that's struggling to live. So it's like there's a little, there's like a mild tension there. Um, but I think it's neither here nor there in this case. I'll just put on my Sven. I, what I could have done is put clear the deck here and then dual Sven on Axe, but I think it's investing a bit too much to deal with him. Okay, and it wouldn't have worked anyway, given what my opponents just played. So none of these cards are very good to play this turn. I'm just going to pass. And slightly awkward here, here now, which is that my Sven, which is one of my stronger heroes, is in a lane where I'm actually kind of losing the lane. So it's going to be a decision point for me if I want to keep contesting that lane, sack that lane, or what. Um, they're going to start getting illusions there now as well. The Enchantress, which I've left alone, just deals so little damage, like so slowly that it doesn't even really matter. So one nice thing is that I'm holding initiative before the next round, which means my LC is going to be able to come out and deal something right away. It's 
quite this right lane is sort of interesting because it's quite hard to fight Axe with extra damage items because he just keeps fighting and destroying things and worst case like he can like two for one you but I don't want to leave these Phantom Lancer Illusions alone either. I'm going to upgrade my shop. See if anything big is offered. I like both of these items. I like being able to reduce Axe's armor. Um, this one gives armor and summons units. I think being able to summon an extra unit is maybe a bit more versatile in this situation. Shadow Fiend is back. So, deployment phase is like one of the harder parts to like sort of talk to the recording while I'm doing it because you there's a lot of mind games involved. You're trying to like predict where your opponent's going to put things and place yours appropriately according to that. Um, I could put them both on the left, just kind of abandon this right lane, or I could put Legion Command on the right and try to keep it alive that way. Like if I did it like this, I'm not having lethal threatened anymore, but Legion Commander doesn't even kill this thing as is. So a little bit awkward because this... These Lancer Illusions are going to kill me quite fast. Um, okay, I've developed a plan in my head. I think what I'm going to do is if I put clear the... If I play the mail here and then... Hmm, I could put the mail on the Sven. Sven summons a creep in front of Axe and then I play clear the deck and then Axe is going to die to the creep and I get the armor back. One downside is that this... Midas Greaves then won't give me income next round. Might be worth it though. So that'll take one, four, four mana, which means I can also afford to duel or smash the deck. Um, Maybe want to duel the Enchantress, even though she's dying to battle damage, just to like s accelerate the clock and give my Shadow Fiend more damage. Alternatively, I could just play the Committed Rebel. I think I'm just going to start by changing the item. See if my opponent reads and anything into it. Now, to be clear, I'm not expecting this tower not to die this game. I think it's definitely going to die, but it makes a difference when it dies. Okay, so they've. I don't really care about that. I don't have to play anything there. I'm going to do this last to sort of hide my plan. I'm going to kill their courier first, because now their items in their hand cost more mana. Which might affect what they were planning to do this turn. It's impossible to know. Golden ticket costs mana. If they want to play the thing they get with it, also costs mana. TP Blink Scroll also costs mana. So now I will summon this creep in front of Axe. And then I can clear the deck and the point is the tower survives this turn. Probably it dies next turn, but it's the point is you don't want to be whole, entire combat rounds behind when you're racing separate lanes. And I'm not really close to killing any of their towers yet, which is obviously very concerning. So they put a damage item on the Enchantress. I don't really see the point in doing that right now. Um, this arms creeps eventually, but so what? Yeah, so clear the decks coming out. I might be able to force them to even redeploy a hero in this lane. They draw, for example. Okay, Bristleback does his thing. I mean, that my opponent just didn't have very good plays that turn, I guess. Oh, 
Oh, right, they put the damage item on the enchantress to kill my LC. Sorry, I obviously missed the... I thought she was still going to live. I wasn't paying good attention to that. I can upgrade again. I can get golden tickets and just kind of roll the dice. I could get Bob Mail, and then if I put my sniper on here, it can taunt. Although, I could just put it on here anyway and shoot one of the creeps. Or I could put it in mid and kill one of the heroes. Kind of just depends on how hard I want to commit to saving this lane another round now. Um, I'm going to get the mail just to keep my options open. You know what, I'll upgrade it as well just for next round. So I'm sort of planning on putting a sniper in this mid lane. I've got initiative so I can kill something right away. It's kind of if I want to kill the PL or the Bristleback. Um, Bristleback's currently trading with the hero, but PL's going to sit here and create more illusions. I think I'll do it like this. That's a very interesting move with the draw to put it right in front of the Sven. I was thinking to keep that lane alive, I could reckless charge my Sven to the middle. Then he taunts both these units. Then I do the same thing with the armor again and block the last one. Um, but regardless of that, I think I'm going to start off with... Do I start off with the shot? Because... If my opponent's planning to silence this fin, then I can't do the plan to keep things alive. I can't anyway, right? Because I won't be able to use the items. Okay, so I start off with a shot. Culling blade, okay. Keep this dead. I accept. Let's just check I have enough mana to do all the things I want to do in that lane. I think I do. And again, mostly what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make this lane trade a bit more. Like if we kill each other's turn this lane at the same time, I would consider that to be like I'm making a, a comeback. Because I was quite far behind in this lane. So I force them to attack him. I give him the mail again. Which means he gets to live. I summon the creep again. So he doesn't actually live, sorry. <laughs> um, I put the barb mail on him next, so then at least the draw dies with him. opponent just keeps passing, it's quite interesting. If I wasn't recording a video, I'd probably like study their deck list a little bit more clearly, but I'm still new to this, so I had to think about doing so many things at once for me. Enchant, ah, uh, that's problematic, okay. So they're gonna kill my tower anyway because they made Sven kill this item. This stage, not much I can do about that. I could TP my Shadow Fiend here and try and like hope that I get lucky killing Bristleback, but it's really quite a like hope. I think actually, wait, yeah, I just put this creep here that works as well. Oh, the awkward thing about what's been happening in this game is this Midas Greaves keeps sitting in my hand, which is really not where you want your Midas Greaves to be because it's not giving that income. So my opponent does one mana, they could use a TP scroll, a blink scroll, sorry. So they could blink their bristle back away to try to save his life. That might be what they do. Wouldn't help to go to the right lane, so they'd have to go to the left lane. 
which is kind of the lane they wanted to abandon. But it's not that bad for their Bristleback to go up, up against the Shadow Fiend, as I discussed earlier. Yeah, and in this case, in fact, it even kills the Shadow Fiend, so... I am very much losing this game, as is. If I can equalize and kill this right hand tar, it, it won't be that bad. And I do have a lot more cards in my hand. Also getting in range of using Assassinate, which is like the expensive powerful card in my hand. So that's a good thing. Claymore could let me equalize towers very quickly. If I manage to sneak in a, a hero in a lane, they're not protecting. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I don't really know where I want my Legion Commander to be. Um, I kind of want it to be here, even though I've already lost my tower here. I could put it in front of the creeps to try stop them snowballing. But I also want to just kill the tower right away. I think Axe is coming here, and I'm going to have to assassinate him right away. I think that's just happening, no matter what. So it's just a question of if I want to... Kill this pressure this tower or the creeps. I'm gonna go for the tower. Yeah, so as discussed, we have to kill Axe, otherwise he just kills Sniper for free. At least the Enchantress has to waste an attack to kill Sniper, you know? And and a deployed disarm sort of gets wasted in the same respect. Um, I have one mana, which means I could play my free item and then one more item. Okay, using another Enchant so that Enchantress can actually attack me. Because the sniper was disarmed, the creep doesn't die though. That kind of works in my favor. They don't have a blink scroll, so unless they have an actual blink and they plan to just sack the enchantress, they're not going to be able to stop me killing this tar. So, that's one good thing. Bad thing about the right lane is that these creeps are going to keep pushing on their own, and I'm going to have to sort of leave a hero here to stop that, even if they don't commit a hero. Um. And then I think I just want to put Midas Greaves, finally get some gold value. So we're both, both players are deploying three heroes next round, so it's a really big round. Um, we've both kind of abandoned the left lane, we've both killed the tower in the right lane, and we've both done similar damage in the mid lane. On that basis, the game's quite close. The reason I think I'm behind is because those Phantom Lancer illusions are just sort of pressuring me on their own in the right lane. Um, I wonder if I could get another Claymore and just try and race. I probably can't. Shadow Fiend has not been doing work this game. My opponent has correctly prioritized it and killed it lots of times. I don't have initiative, which means that Keef won't reliably kill Enchantress. I can sort of hope that he does, though. I think I want to just leverage the fact that the left lane is still very high HP, and if my opponent commits heroes there, then they can't fight in the other lanes. I think I might need to put Sven on the right, and I'll just use Blink Scroll to bring the Legion Commander across and start dueling things or something like that. Um, really sucks that I don't have an HP item for her because she, these duels would be super powerful for her if I did. So I know it's counterintuitive putting a second hero in here, but it's because I'm planning to pull one out and the Sven can hold the lane on his own, kind of.
Oh, okay, well this spell is like nearly impossible to beat. Not sure what to do now. I can still kill this thing with Enchantress, but look at that, my, my tower is basically dead now. Uh, I mean, sure, we might as well kill it. I mean, Time of Triumph gives plus three of like every ability to all the heroes. It's pretty nuts. So I definitely have to bring Elsie across. It could make sense to be in the empty slot, so I take the least damage. She's gonna die no matter what I do. Is there a duel she can win before she dies? Doesn't look like it. Even if I give her more armor. I can reduce their armor a lot. I think I'd just golden ticket first. Get some information. Maybe I get a amazing item that does cool things. Ring of Basilius. Doesn't do that much. I mean, one nice thing is that my opponent used all their mana on this powerful spell, so I've like got free reign on this turn now. Yeah, the cleave is hurting Shadow Fiend at the moment. Want to keep him alive? I wonder if I had put my LC in one of the other slots, if I could have just gone straight lethal with her. Maybe I could have. That could be end up being a huge oversight. Another presence of the Dark Lord. Really weakening these things a lot. Um... Hopefully we don't hit Bristleback. Cool. I could duel this Legion Commander. How much do I need to survive? Two armor should do the trick. Oh, I don't have enough mana left afterwards. Right. Right, 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 right. My oh, opponent's not very happy. Cool. Um, I could just summon the creep here instead of that creep. That might be the play then. Why was... I thought the PL was dying. And then suddenly it wasn't dying. What did I do to change that? All right, and my opponent just conceded. Um, I may have like played much worse than I could have because I was trying to explain everything as I went along and it's a difficult game to think about. But hopefully I'll get better as I'm going and hopefully I think the things that I was talking about are still all valid things for you to be thinking about when you play. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments what you think, what you'd like more of, what you'd like less of, uh, because I'm probably going to be making a, a few more of these.